Today, I'm gonna to show you guys how to make your dirt bike faster. Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to the channel for another video. As you guys heard in the title today, I'm gonna to show you guys how to make your dirt bike faster. Now, how are we gonna do that? With some gosh darn gearing, boys. So if you guys didn't know already, gearing can make a huge change on how the actual like engine runs and where you get the power in the power band. Now the example we're working on today is my KLX 140 RF over here. And uh, yeah, this thing's great. It's got good power. What I want to be able to achieve with today's gearing swap is being able to bring the power down. And I know you're like, what? How is it gonna make your bike faster? Well, the plan is to make it so it has a better acceleration because I spend a lot of time riding in the trails and not very often when I'm out on the main roads, like just trying to get maximum top speed. So for me, I rather be able to have more torque in the lower gears like for second third and fourth gear when you're in the tight treed sections and you're trying to just like whip up and down and all over the place so i want more torque in lower gears and that's what we're going to be accomplishing with today's gearing mod now if you guys are interested in trying to make more top speed with your bike you can do the exact same thing with the exact same steps we're going to go through today if you do want to check out a video i do have one covering just specifically on top speed which will be linked up in the corner or down below in the description but yeah today we're going to go out and we're going to make this thing accelerate even faster so let's go ahead and let's jump on into it now as you guys as can see here we got a front sprocket for the klx 140 now on the 140 rf it comes standard with a 13 front sprocket down in here and we're going to go ahead and we're going to swap it out for this 12 tooth sprocket which is going to go ahead and give it some more torque it's going to pull a little bit of top speed off of it but we're going to get more torque in all the gears now the very first thing we need to do is loosen this back wheel off so we can slack off the tension on the chain so we can actually pull the front sprocket off so we're going to go and just pull off the nut here and you don't even have to pull it off you just really just got to slack slack off this nut here and that's just going to give us enough room to come to the tensioners here and then we can go ahead and untension those so we can pull the chain off you guys can see we got our 19 millimeter wrench up on the nut and we're literally just going to crack it loose just like so you don't even have to take the cotter pin out of the rim just literally loosen this guy up just so it's not super duper snug on the wheel and that's it then we're going to take our 10 and 12 mil wrench and we're going to stick that on and we're just going to go ahead and loosen those guys together just so we can get this nut here loosened off and this is just our tensioner bolt here so just loosen this guy off like so and then the same thing over on the other side all right now we've got lots of tension up on our chain which is enough to be able to pull the sprocket off now to be able to get to our access to our sprocket here in the back we got these two eight millimeter bolts which has our just little chain guard on top of it so we'll go ahead and we'll just crack these two eight mils off and pull this guy off this top bolt does look to have its own little bracket that's gonna come off with it, as well as a couple spacers, like so. All right, now that we've got that cover pulled off, as you guys can see, there's a little tiny snap ring, and that's what's holding our sprocket on. So you're gonna need some snap ring pliers, and we'll pull the snap ring off. So here's what snap ring pliers look like. They simply just have these two little dots, these little nubs, and these are what go and pop into the snap ring. Well, I'm going to rotate the sprocket. I want it somewhere down like right here. Just put those in, line them up, open the snap ring, and pop it off. Okay, now this whole shock sprocket, sorry, we should be able to just slide right off like so. And then we're gonna go ahead, pull this guy off. And let's go up to the bench and let's compare the two. So you guys can see our two different sprockets we have. We have the original one here and our aftermarket one here. So this one here is a 13 tooth sprocket. And we can see if we take the 12 tooth sprocket and lay it over top, center for center, you can see that the overall diameter of the 13 tooth sprocket is a bit larger. Uh, as well as there's just more teeth. So this smaller sprocket's gonna help us give us more torque by the way of it multiplication through the diameter size of this and how many teeth count it has. So that is how we're gonna get some more speed is just simply by swapping out our front sprocket. Now you can also do this on the rear and it makes uh, a smaller adjustment if this is too big of an adjustment when you go up or down a sprocket size or up or down a tooth size. You can go ahead and try changing out the rear sprocket a tooth or two uh, as one tooth on the front sprocket is equal to changing around roughly three to four teeth on the rear sprocket. So keep that in mind if you wanna do a minor, minor modification to your gearing or more of a major modification. So we're gonna go ahead and step it down to a 12 tooth. So let's go ahead, let's throw it on and then we're gonna see if it, how, what kind of difference this makes out on the trails. So now we've got our new sprocket here. We're gonna line that up, stick that up into the sprockets. Now it's important that you get the right pitch of sprocket and then it's the correct millimeter spline count for the actual counter shaft. You want to make sure it actually goes on just like so, like a glove and our snap ring, just like this. We should be able to just snap. Now that we've got that guy on there, the next thing is to come back and make sure that we fix up the rear tension on the back chain because as you can see, this thing is floppy joppy Joe now. 
and uh, we need to go ahead and set this tensioner correct. So hopefully we have an, enough chain. Now, when you put a smaller front sprocket on, the chain is gonna be larger, so you're gonna have more slack if you put a small one on, and then it might come to the point that you don't have enough adjustment and you might actually need to shorten the chain by taking a link out of the chain. Now, if you go up in size on front sprocket, you might run out of chain and not have one that's long enough and you might need to go up a size and chain. Now, if you're going one or two tooth up or down, it shouldn't be too big of a deal and you should be able to have enough adjustment here at your adjustment screws. But if not, you can cut the chain or get a longer chain to make that fit your bike appropriately. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna adjust our tensioners until this chain is no longer floppy and is nice and tight. Now it's important when we're actually tightening or adjusting the chain that we do it equally on equal sides so that the wheel doesn't become cocked and actually like pull to one left or right as you're riding when you hit the accelerator. So you wanna make sure that you tighten each side of the wheel. You wanna make sure that each of these bolts adjust the tightener here and that these plates, they either get pushed out or pushed in at the same rate on both sides. You want to make sure that these plates are equally spaced out apart and you have the same amount of distance being pushed out and you can tell when you look at the back of the tire you'll tell if it's pointing off to one way or the other if you don't do the adjustment right so you want to make sure that your tire ends up staying true and you can kind of follow the line that runs through the center of the tire that you want to make sure that guy is nice and straight so when you hop on the throttle the bike isn't walking out all sideways on you so we're going to go ahead and you're just going to adjust these bolts by pushing them in or out with the 10 mil on the head of the bolt and that's going to shove this plate in or out which is going to push the wheel backwards or forwards so we're going to head we're going to set our tension on the chain and then i'll hop back with you guys quickly how do i like adjusting it is i like to do one adjustment on this side and then go to the other side so if this needs to go out we'll go get to a spot we can get the full wrench on it here oh well, maybe you can't maybe you can only get half clicks but i like to go and do one on this side so we need to do out so we're going to do one out on this side i'm going to hop over to the other side of the bike and do one on that side come back this side one on this side go to the other side one on that side until the ch chain is no longer loose now an easy way to check if your chain is still too loose if you can pull the chain and watch it move all around the rest of the sprockets here you know it's still way too loose. You do not want to be able to pick this up and have it move all around the rest of the sprocket. So clearly this is still too loose, so we're gonna keep on tightening it. All right, now that we got our chain nice and tensioned up, we'll go ahead, we'll put our cover that we got here, stick that back up on our sprocket, tighten it all up, and uh, let's go ahead and we'll go for a little spin and just see what it feels like. All right, now we got our little cover on. We're just gonna make sure we don't forget to go ahead and just make sure this wheel's butted all the way up against those. So we can just go ahead, just give it a nice, Couple kicks there, boom, bang, bing. Now we're just gonna go over and make sure we tighten up this nut that we loosened here at the very beginning to make sure our wheel doesn't come off. And uh, yeah, once that's tight, let's go ahead and just take it for a little spin around the block and then we'll go out and hop out into the trails and we'll see how this does. Not too shabby boys. Doesn't really feel too different just putting it around here. Definitely feels more torquey. Definitely feels more torquey. Oh yeah, he you can feel it. Way more, way more bite to the each when you touch that throttle. <laughs> That is awesome boys. I'm super stoked now to go and take this thing out to the trails and see what it really feels like. You can really feel the torque, like even in third gear going pretty slow, you roll on it and that thing's got the snap now to like, to go with it. So I'm really excited to take this out up into the trails and we'll go out and we'll test and see what this thing's really like, so. All right, so we just did the gearing swap. Let's see what it feels like, woohoo! In its first little trail section here. I instantly can feel it's much more torquey down low even in a higher gear. Like now second gear, feels a whole lot shorter, which is great. This feels really good in these little trail sections. Like really good. Really like how it feels here. The torquing it, whoa! Oh yeah, the torquiness is definitely there. <laughs> whoa, it's like, whoa. It's like a whole new animal, really. This thing's a lot better. Holy, yeah, that is just, when you roll your wrist, it's, it's there. Now I wonder how much that affected our top speed. Wow, this thing goes much better. 
Now I've yet to calibrate it since the last time we were out. So the last time it said we hit 82, let's see what it says here. Now we are going uphill. 74, 75 is what it seems like we're maxing out at. So that would mean seven kilometers an hour we lost to the top speed to get more torque on low gear. Let's see what it's like up in this little trail. it way more playful holy crap way more playful now if you guys are curious the parts will be linked down in the description this works for any dirt bike you can get gearing changes so make sure you go down below check it out in the description box below and pick up your gearing change today if you guys enjoyed this video make sure you go down below click like leave, leave a comment if you got any questions click subscribe for more we got lots more coming on make sure you turn on bell notifications and i'll see you guys in the next one peace out